All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So, first things first, or f I guess first things first first. Welcome to the 23rd, 22nd, some number, meeting of the year for Game Development Club. So first things first, second <laughs> announcements. Um, there's going to be no workshop or workspace this meeting. We are going to be doing something else on Saturday that I will get into in a moment. As usual, if you want to show off your game or show off any concepts or ideas you have, please let one of us know and we will give you time at the beginning of the, of the meeting to show it off and see if people are interested. Today is the last day to pay for your t-shirts and guarantee you get your size. So if you would like a t-shirt for this year, design shown here, please pay by today so we can guarantee you get your size. If you pay later, you can get a t-shirt. That's totally fine, but we can't guarantee we'll have one of your size. We can only order so many. So if you'd like a t-shirt, please let us know. So this Saturday, <laughs> we're going to be doing the pitch jam. So what a pitch jam is, is it's basically, so, so a game jam, you show up, you come up with a game concept, and over the course of 48 hours, you make the game. Uh, with the pitch jam, it's shorter, so we're doing an eight hour pitch jam this time, and you don't actually make any games. This is your chance to come up with a game concept and really actually nail down as many of the specifics as you can. Your goal is to create a game design doc, fill it out, with a ton of information, create a pitch, uh, a pitch presentation, and then basically at the end you will pitch your game to the rest of the club and possibly continue it, possibly get people interested in it if you've got a game idea you've been sitting on, or it's just great practice for that regardless. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, it'll be this Saturday, noon to 8 p.m in Marston 2200, you don't have to, it's kind of the same rules as a game jam, you don't have to stay the whole time, yada yada. What's up? Uh, so, where did you find that image, or did you make it yourself? I made it. <laughs> Are you proud of yourself? Yes. We were going to add another you. one, but we couldn't, uh, we knew we couldn't redeem ourselves after making that, so. Yeah, I was going to put like a serious picture, but I was like, that's such, that's just such a dumb image, there's nothing else that I can do to this page to make it any better, so. Yeah, and I had to blur that picture of that jam jar of jam, so. I'm glad you did. I do. <laughs> From plenty of effort into our presentation. Oh, so. boy. Oh, boy. So thank you for noticing those details. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Did anybody else notice the Discord server thing? The April Fool's thing? Discord server thing. I mean, I noticed there was a glitch where, like, my notifications wouldn't go away, but, like... Never mind then. I'm sorry. Um, uh, is there a, a grad student from the... Yes, okay. Do you have uh, something you want to present or are you just up to talk? Um, it's up to you. Yeah, I sure a little bit. All right, sure. And I will get this out of your way. So, this is a cool opportunity, by the way, guys. You should... Really listen up. Do you want to plug in? <laughs> yep. And then if you want to talk into this, great. That's just for the camera, so we can record it. Perfect. All right, hey everyone, my name's Alec. Um, I'm a grad student working for Dr. Stephen Gilbert. He's the co-director of the Virtual Reality Application Center. And so I'm coming to talk to you guys, um, kind of gauging interest for a possible design challenge slash kind of mini game jam that we were thinking about hosting over at VREC. Um, so this has to do with a project that I've been working on with Dr. Gilbert as well as Dr. John Kelly in the psychology department. And the idea is, um, having to do with virtual reality that if you want to g explore a big wide area in the environment that is you're limited by like what you can actually walk around in as far as just the normal walking interface and so if you're trying to explore a larger area you have like the ability let's see I'll pull up the presentation here 
This is stolen without shame from Dr. Kelly. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Um, but so if you want to be able to go further, you have to come up with some kind of interface that is going to allow you to move around even when your physical space is not that big. So just thinking about like the simple interface, you can just move around with a joystick and rotate and everything like that. Um, but that tends to cause motion sickness or um, called cyber sickness. And so what a lot of the big game companies you probably have seen is moving on to this teleporting interface. The idea is you just point, you have a little arc or a laser pointer, and wherever you're pointing to when you let go of the cursor, that's you're just instantly there. Because you never see the motion, you never get that disconnect between what your body's feeling and what your eyes see, then there's no cyber sickness. Um, but there's still a problem with that one. And so another option is when you can teleport and rotate both in that. Um, but in both of those interfaces, you have the issue that you are not able to build a mental map the same way. So like psychologically, when you're just walking around, that helps you kind of figure out your orientation and your location in the space that you're in. And when you're teleporting, you don't get that as well. And it's easy to get lost and disoriented in the environment. And so what we're looking at is just quantifying how bad that disconnect is. And then second, looking at designing new interfaces that can av still avoid the cyber sickness, but maybe build that mental map just a little bit better. And so what we're working on right now is coming up with some new interfaces. And that's where we are wondering if you guys would be interested in kind of doing this little game jam and coming up with, seeing what you can come up with. Uh, let's see. So, and if you guys are interested, I can send this around. We're still figuring out if, uh, just seeing if anybody has interest tonight. Um, first of all, and then we'll figure out like when it would actually be. But we could host this at VRAC. You'd have the chance to kind of see what is all going on there, talk to some of the professors as well. Um, it'd be a cool experience, try out some of the gear that they've got there. Um, so the Oculus, Vive, the HoloLens, Magic Leap, and a few other systems. Um, let's see. So it would essentially, as far as the actual challenge itself, it would be um, having an environment set up for you and just a basic teleporting interface to just something to show you how to um, work with the Vive controllers if you haven't done that already. And then kind of just something as a starting point. And from there, it would just be whatever you wanted to do with it. And like, there are plenty of videos out online. I just don't want to like prime you in that direction and then just like, have creativity as far as it can go. So I guess just gauge an interest here. Yeah. So show of hands, who would be interested in attending an event like that, working with creating a new way to move in virtual reality and a new interface to work with? I'm going to raise my hand. <laughs> so. All right. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, and, and, nine, I think. Yuka. and so we just got. What, three, four weeks left of the semester now, something like that. So, and you think you would have time to do it if we plan this in the next couple of weeks? That's the tough one. Yeah, that's the tough one. I feel you too. But if you, even if you don't go to VRAC and do it there, this is something that you can always do on your own, on your own time, and still submit it. Is that correct? Definitely, yeah. So I encourage you um, to still check it out. I believe. The equipment checkout in Pearson's basement has two vibes that you can check out and take home and develop on. So if you are interested, you can check that out and do some work over a weekend or something. Yes. No. <laughs> you cannot keep them. If you don't ever return them, the school will probably just bill you the entire price. So they will buy you. It's yeah. probably probably not worth going that direction but <laughs> there are plenty of ways to work at it at home even if you don't have the hardware so if you're interested and you for instance can't make time for it in the next few weeks absolutely don't feel like you've missed out do some work at home and whatnot so i think what we'll do then is i'll set up a google form or a doodle poll something like that is it jacob mm -hmm. so i'll have you send it out if that works yeah that's um, great either finding a time or it'll just be over the couple of three weeks uh, probably we'll set a deadline in probably about three weeks for when it'll be. Mm -hmm. 
So, great. Awesome. Thank you so much for, for showing that off. It's a great opportunity, for sure. It should be really interesting. All right. Let's get this restitution. Right in. All right. So, with that, let's not do anything apparently. Let's get into the meeting topic that I wanted to talk about today. So it's going to be kind of a short meeting in terms of the actual content today, but it's really important stuff. So we're going to be going over design documents. So who knows what a design document is? Okay, do you know what a design document is compared to a pitch document? The difference is there. You want to... Oh, okay. Sh just short, short, short description of... Um, a pitch document is designed to get across the general idea and get people excited to buy, play, invest in your game. Mm -hmm. um, while the design document gets down to the gritty details, it also very much goes in on how the game, how the game should look and feel. But um, it's more about like mechanics and how the game will be built and what will be in the game. Exactly, exactly. That was pretty much, yeah, that was textbook, <laughs> textbook definition. Well, I actually read it. <laughs> so to reiterate a little bit, the ideas be be between them are similar but, dif but different. Um, we talked about pitch, pitch documents at a previous meeting, so this should, be, should not be anything new. Um, that the idea of a pitch document is to keep it short and interesting, but a design document should be really, really detailed. This is where you are, you are going into the nitty gritty details. Up until then, you've been talking about there will be multiple enemy types. In the design document is where you can detail those multiple enemy types one by one and show exactly what they are. Um, pitch documents are typically used externally, so they're used with you know, trying to convince people basically to invest in your game or to join your team. There you people yeah. interested for one reason or another is pretty much the point of the pitch document. And then design documents, the, the whole point of those is to uh, have a reference for everyone to look at as they're building a game to look back at and see what exactly happens at this specific or in this specific case, I can talk, mm -hmm. uh, so that you don't have to always be conversing with each other and deciding these things as you build it. Yep. And this and the design doc is very useful because it helps eliminate the need for communication between different parts of the team. So the programmers don't have to keep pestering the designers for what exactly needs to go in here. The idea is they can look at the design doc as reference and they don't need to ask all those questions. It should all be detailed in one way or another. And finally, um, pitch documents are very high level. They talk about the game in general. They talk about mechanics from a very high point of view, not really getting into any, any details, just sort of getting across the point, whereas the design document you should be getting into v v fairly low level um, details, talking about possibly even, even numeric values for different things, run speeds of animation times, of all that kind of stuff. So, a few, few useful things for writing a good design document. Number one, your design document is a living document. Typically, living document is not a great term. It's not a very, people don't really like that term. They don't like it when things are living documents, but a design document, you should be changing it as you go. However, you should not write it with the intent of changing it later. You should be putting in the details into your design document. You should be planning as much as you can before you go into actually working with it. But, Things don't always go as planned. If you realize certain things won't work the way you thought, totally, absolutely go and change it. You just shouldn't be going in with the mindset of, let's, let's not worry about that section, we'll write it as we go and make the game. Not a great, not a great mindset to have. I wouldn't suggest that. And then, like we said, the, this is really the go-to place for uh, anyone to look at for what they should do in 
any specific case and what they need to get done. So if, say, you're going to start working on the Goomba in Mario, you need to know that it goes left and right. When Mario jumps on it, uh, Mario jumps this far off of him. Uh, how fast is he going? What animation does Goomba have, or does he have animation? Uh, and every little detail will need to go in there. And so when someone making the Goomba looks, they can be just look at this rather than discussing with people and figure out, all right, so whenever Goomba hits a wall, he just turns around and maybe this animation will play. And that's all the programmer needs to know for that case. And then what happens when he falls off the edge? Or does he you know, fall down and die? Or does he respawn? Or all these different cases. And the design doc should cover every single one of these so that you don't have to ask questions. You don't have to discuss stuff. Obviously, there will be times when there is a missing edge case or something. And you will need to go and figure out or add something in or to this design doc. That's why it's a living document. But as much as you can should be planned ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then obviously you want to put a ton of details into your into your design doc. Um, absolutely, pretty much everything that anyone would need to know, like we were saying. So. A lot of design documents get very, very long, very, very thick, like the book shown there. That's not a bad thing. That is, I mean, it's probably not a good thing if it's too long, but you should, it should be fairly long. So don't be worried about, oh, is this going into too much detail? Probably not. I wouldn't suggest going into too much detail all of the time with all of the nitty gritty stuff, you should not be programming your game in two places. It's kind of a waste of, a waste of effort if you're putting a ton of how you would program things in the design document and then you go and program them in your game. It's just, that's not really necessary. But having too much detail is not a bad thing inherently. So just don't, maybe don't focus on, on putting in too much detail a lot, but it's not a bad thing if you do necessarily. And then like we mentioned before, um, having a good design document removes the need for different groups to ask around and figure out who needs to do what and communicate between things and, and all that. And you'll see with design docs, if you get into a AAA company or something, there will be multiple people that are, this is their job, it's to create this design design. They don't actually program, they don't actually make art, they don't actually do level design, they just do all this and design doc and tell all the people all these different things that they need to program, that they need to make the art for this, that they need to do this. So uh, this is a, a job in and of itself for larger projects, but when you get to smaller projects, some of them, especially if you're doing it individually, the design doc is much more living, I would imagine, because it's not, you don't have that communication issue. If you're you know, doing it with a group of four, maybe it can be uh, you add on bits and bits as you go, whereas a l much larger project you would want to get as much of it laid out at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And it's always, it never hurts to have it laid out at the beginning, so even if you are doing it individually and working on it, that's what pitch dam will be for. Yep. yep. So. I had something else I was going to say, but I totally lost it. Has anybody heard of a has anybody heard of a design document from a game that they've seen or looked at it at any point? Because I know the Doom Bible is a fairly famous one, although that's not the best example because they didn't necessarily put in everything that they designed into there. But that is an example of a very in-depth, very long design document on the game Doom. So if you're interested in that, you should go check it out. Don't read it, my god. No, no please read it. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, he had such a complex idea for the story, but the people who were working with him on it was just like, we can't, we can't do this. This is too much, this is way too much. We need to throw out the entire story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> but it is, it is, if you, if you look up design documents for games that you might know, it's very interesting to look through and read um, 
different ways that they put things together. Now I remember what I was going to say. Not every game will have similar looking design documents. Yeah. Spoiler, the Super Mario Bros. Uh, design document is not going to have a huge mechanics section. It's just not. There's not a lot of mechanics to the game. There's like three power-ups and you can jump. That's pretty much, that pretty much summed up most of, most of what that section would entail. However, if you have something like one of the Metroid games where you have tons of different power-ups that you get over time, then yes, the mechanic section would be quite, quite lengthy as you're explaining each different mechanic that the player can use. So, And one more thing, make sure to organize your design doc. Kind of seems obvious, but if you don't organize your design doc, and th this is people's go-to place to find stuff for what they're supposed to do and what they're supposed to uh, implement in the game. So organization is key in order for people to be able to find uh, all these details because it doesn't do anyone any good if they can't find where it is. Although Control F is a wonderful tool and should be used appropriately. Three words, table of contents, please. Please spare the readers. Give them some place, some way to find the, the place they were at or the place they need to look. Hyperlinks. What's that? Add hyperlinks. That is actually not a bad idea. No. Google Drive is a beautiful thing for design docs. I'm just saying. It's, it's nice to have something like that. So. All right. I said it would be short. Yeah, it was like two slides. Um, not really that much to talk about in terms of design documents because there's not a lot of good specific practices that you need to use. It depends on game to game and it's really just writing out the details of your game. But we wanted to do sort of like a little, a little practice bit for design documents. So the idea behind this is I'd like you to get into groups of, I'm gonna make smaller groups, bigger groups, what do you think? Uh. Like three people or so. Three or four people. Four. I'd say try, try for three or four people. Get in a group. And then I want you to come up with a game idea. A full game idea. But only the, the cliff notes of it. Come up with a very simple summary. A very simple idea for the game. But then I want you to pick one mechanic or one feature or one level that you want to design or something. And I want you to go into as much detail as you can in the time and fill out as much as you can in terms of how it works, how it interacts with other things, yada yada. So take one very small part of that general game idea and try to expand upon it as if you were putting it into a game, into a design document. And then we can talk about them after. So does that sound good? Everybody get that? Okay, then... Should we do forced groups for once? What do you guys think? Forced? Forced groups? I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I think so. How many people do we have? So, uh, 17. So if we're doing groups of three or four, count by six, right? Am I stupid? No, count by four. Yeah. Oh, yes. No, if you count by four, then you'd have six people in a group, or five people in a group. No, you'd have five people in a group, so count by five. Five times four is 20. Yeah, count by So you'd have four people and then... All right, count by five, starting with Brian. Well, I guess you only have one person in a group. <laughs> no, I, I don't no, you're yeah, yeah, count by five. Yeah, we're, five. We're, we're, we're good at math, I swear. All right, so count off by five, starting with Brady, front row, and we'll snake around. So, yeah, sorry you don't get to... One. One. Two. Three. Four. <laughs> five. <laughs> all three of you in a row all, all couldn't figure it out. Come on. <laughs> five. Okay. Back to elementary school. <laughs> Dose. Three. Five. Uh, one. One, yes. Two. Three. Four, five, one. Two, yeah, we got it, okay. <laughs> All right, so get in your groups. Uh, we'll go one up here to the side, two up in the middle, three on that. You guys, you know what, you guys can figure it out. I don't need to tell you where to go. This is, you guys are old enough. <laughs> uh, apparently they can't count, though. <laughs> 
first. Reminds me of uh, Meet the Soldier from TF2. Have you seen that video? Mm -hmm. or no, Meet the Spy. It's a soldier in the video, though. Uh, one, one, one. Uh, one. One. <laughs> Valve likes that. They put that in Portal 2 when Wheatley's trying to guess the password. Yep. A, 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 uh, A. A, 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 uh, C. A, A, oh, God, I forget B. A, 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 B. Damn it. All right, that's it. So, I hope you put in a, a good amount of detail, a fairly, fairly deep amount of, of, of detail. So, uh, who would like to come up, first of all, and show what, they, what they've done? Because you get to come up. And you get to put it under the dock cam or plug it in. Wait, we're supposed to, we didn't write it down. If you didn't write it down, then you can just say it. Could you please send it that's, I mean, that's also fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my face. <laughs> I guess we'll go. Nobody's going to make fun of you, I promise. We're just... Look <laughs> 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 your face. <laughs> <laughs> Only in if, front of your back. If you want to write anonymous insult, I mean, uh, uh, criticisms, you can, you can do that. I'd like you to please personally email all the things you don't like about me. <laughs> you, stole my, you stole the chair I was going for. Just like the mechanics. So, yeah, where should we start? Uh, probably with the general summary of your game and then okay. so, wait, all right, your mechanics <laughs> well, to your game. Okay. Otherwise, you know, what Goomba does doesn't make much sense if you don't know what Mario is. So, okay. Who is Mario? So, <laughs> okay. So the game begins with a no-killer shelter full of kittens. Um, they happen to be 
uh, right next to a fireworks factory. <laughs> um, for some reason, uh, we're not going to put it, we're not going to put it in the, the actual game. But for some reason, there's a plank between a window from the top floor of the no-kill shelter to the bottom floor of the fireworks factory. And all of the kids <laughs> <laughs> have made it to the fireworks factory. Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah, but uh, this was uh, this was just a minor problem until the building next to the fireworks factory, the matches factory. <laughs> uh, caught on fire until uh, so now you, uh, person who is uh, deeply affected by explosions, has to run around this uh, fireworks factory saving the kittens. Uh, while simultaneously making sure to avoid both avoid and not look at explosions, <laughs> which is like the main mechanic. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see the same like see the same pretty much all the kittens in the firework factory that's on fire and it's going to explode. Not like a matter of like you know, a couple minutes of yes. Yeah. Without looking at the explosions. So. Yes. If you look at the like uh, we decided if you look at the explosions you're blinded for a certain amount of time and have to just kind of like. If you look at another explosion during that time, it, the timer resets until you don't. You have to play it by hand. So you might spend half the game not being able to see and continuously yeah. not being able to see. Potentially. Yeah. Well, you, there's a, um, we're doing binaural audio, so you know where the explosions are coming from and the sound. So Sorry. you can kind of navigate around using the audio and just like hearing the kittens meowing. But you have to be careful not to actually walk into an explosion or then you like probably die. Um. <laughs> well, we came up with special power-ups, like uh, nightshades, I think. <laughs> sunglasses. Cool sunglasses. Yeah, cool, cool sunglasses. Ray-Bans. Yeah. So, so put the is this like a 2D, 3D? This is going to be like, we thought it would be like uh, a 3D first-person Yeah, first-person 3D. Okay. Um, so what, what did you go into detail on? Let's go with the audio. Like, yeah. Yeah. if you like grab Ken and you hear a like, name bounce to your left, like maybe you're, or like in front of you, you'd like look away kind of thing, within first person, because otherwise you lose. So like that was pretty much like the main mechanic of the game. It's the audio of both like looking and not looking at the explosions. Yeah. Did you did you come up with the sounds that different things make at all, or? Yeah. Um, it's never really talked about. Like a, a, like did you a, say like a hiss? Yeah. For like, when, yeah. Like the firework is burning through whatever. Like this. Um, yeah. yeah. It was hammer things at first. I mean, fireworks, so. <laughs> 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 might be going too far. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, we, did, we didn't think of the kitten's idea until later. Yes. That, that's how the process works. Ah. It started with explosions. <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> okay. It all started with explosions. <laughs> yeah. What um, other noises could you add in that you think would um, add to the game design doc? Various, like, various different like stock sounds of kittens, of course. Uh, we could also do like um, like the sound of like wind blowing through a window. So if you're blinded and you're next to a window and you want to like save the kittens like by by releasing them out of the building through the window, then <laughs> when you're um, not too high up. Yeah, and you're not too high up. <laughs> you're just throwing them out the window. <laughs> Cats land on their feet. Yeah, I was yeah, gonna say. Be yeah, be Twelve awesome. stories. Yeah. If not, <laughs> awesome. and if not they have nine. <laughs> if not, they have nine lives. Yeah. It's one. <laughs> just, it's just one. <laughs> no big deal. Have you considered like n one different kinds of fireworks having different kinds of fuses yeah. that might act differently or have different timers, or fireworks that have fuses that sound very close to kitten meows. That would be Ooh. a terrible, like, a great <laughs> idea. like mimic yeah. fireworks. There's like a that would <laughs> mimic fireworks. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, it's a cat, and then it explodes because it was yeah. a cat-shaped firework that <laughs> sounds like a cat what? when its fuses go. Why did they even make these? <laughs> yeah, it explodes, it looks like a cat face. It looks like, yeah, that's the, that's the reason they made it like that. That's why the cats were over there in the first place, to go check out the other cats. Or Maybe. Yeah. They heard the meows. It all fits. Yeah, that means they're already on fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the, the fire only came after the cats were already in the building. Okay. So, um, I guess it wouldn't make the noise, but then maybe they saw the silhouette. <laughs> um, yeah, that would say, that'd be a great idea. Um, you need like guts, too. Like yeah. fireworks that, like, there's a Don't. specific sound that makes, and you already know that that one will explode, so you can keep looking forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, like, have... 
Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Those have slight variations in the audio that can t that once you learn them, you'll understand the difference between each firework. Um, so you don't necessarily have to go over and look at it each time. Um, we also came up with ideas for how the game would end. Like, um, it would just be like one of various photos of like either a person really sad alone, or a person with one cat both crying, or a person with a bunch of cats eating food and being happy uh, for the best ending. So, yeah. I think another sound effect would be when you crash into random objects, if you're, especially if you're blind by that point. Like just knowing when you can't move forward anymore, like a big thunk or something to just tell you yeah. to actually turn and go somewhere else. Yeah. I could definitely see this as a VR experience because A, you got a direct line of sight which way you're looking. You can control that stuff very easily and throwing cats out windows sounds like a very tactile thing. <laughs> you're not <laughs> throwing all the cats out the window, okay? <laughs> just calm down, take it back. I feel like I'd go Jeez. blind if I did that in VR though. <laughs> It'd be very bright. Yeah. You would need to make um, it so it works with it. But. Yeah, we did the, We did talk about VR. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Cool. So I, I would say in terms of if you were writing the design document for this, I would definitely go into the kind of detail we were suggesting with like different kinds of sounds that you might hear. Like, you, you yes, you've got the mechanic of having sounds that identify things but also putting in types of sounds, like when you hit an object or when there's a window near you would be... That would probably be about as much detail as you needed there. Yeah. Because yeah. you could go into specifics in other areas. Or like if you wanted to say there's a decoy one, say like the decoy one sounds very, very similar to this. You don't have to say the exact sound of them because the sound designer, that's their job to do that, but... No, you have to type out the amount on a monopia. <laughs> yeah. Specifically, uh, you have to meow. make a meaty file. <laughs> 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 so just like make write sheet music. <laughs> if you condense this entire song into half a second, it would make the sound. I swear. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah. Nice job. <laughs> Who else? We should have at least one more group go. I don't know how much time we have. Grayson, get on up. Jake, seven fifty-seven. Go on. Oh, shit. Okay, our game's title. I was the one who chose it. I don't know if they necessarily agree with it, <laughs> but it's Wendy's four for four. The first four is spelled F O R E, four, and then F O U R. It is a couch game where you play with four players. And you try and kill each other using golf. Using, using golf. <laughs> it's a, it's I wasn't golf. sure if I heard that <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> golf, golf battle game. Uh, not golf clubs. Golf. Golf. Yes. Okay. So it's it's two-dimensional platforming elements where you have four players. Each person starts the golf club, their character, and three golf balls like in their inventory. And at the start, everyone drops your golf ball, tees up, and hits it. And the goal of the game is to kill the other players with your golf ball. So the players will have a hitbox that's about like their torso, so you, like, you can't hit their legs to kill them. And the mechanic that we focused on was the process of like swinging and hitting the golf, golf ball, like which circumstances you could hit the golf ball, and like some limitations to it as well. So, I don't know. Yeah. So one of the things we were having trouble deciding was uh, whether or not you have to stand still while you're aiming and uh, hitting the golf ball. Uh, because some of us thought, oh well, that would add a good element if you had to stand still because that gives you the choice of, oh, do I want to uh, be aggressive and shoot golf balls, but it also leave me vulnerable. So what we decided was um, when you start off, because you have multiple golf balls in your inventory to start out with, when you first hit golf, your golf ball, you have to stand still. And then once that golf ball lands, if you go over to it, you can do like a running swing at it, so you don't have to stand still while you're aiming, but it'll be a little less accurate, uh, obviously. Um, or you can choose to pick it up, right, and put it into your inventory. So that's one of the mechanics, because we were split between, oh, can you just move all of the time while you're aiming them, and that we were like, oh, that doesn't really make sense, you know, our game's all about golf, and you know, you don't golf running. So I think we got like a happy medium yeah. in between. 
you know, the strategy comes from you, know, you have to stop to pick up a golf ball, but that also lets you reposition to potentially a higher point and then rain, rain golf balls from above yeah. where you can stop but you're more protected by the platform you're on. And also we decided that uh, the mechanic of shooting is going to work where you're, you kind of pull it back like a slingshot and the further you pull it back, the faster you can shoot it. And so if you shoot a golf ball above like a certain speed, mm -hmm. you like more damage than just a normal hit with the golf ball. And yeah, it's all about positioning, but also running up to your golf ball and just smacking it as hard as you can sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we, we also considered whether or not you could have like friendly fire on, you know, you gotta worry about uh, killing each other. And we just thought, oh, well, we'll just leave it in as an option. You know, you could toggle it on and off. Thought that would be a good idea. Um, Two to four players. Yep. You can do teams. One v one. Not teams. Four v two v twos. I guess we could have a free for all. I don't see why that wouldn't work either. Um, yeah. So like, I don't know. Uh, a lot of like our inspiration, I think, was like from like worms. Think about like yeah. how that oh, yeah. looks. Yeah. You know. Sure. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is live action. Or not live, like it's not, <laughs> not, not, it's all live action. It's all video. Uh, it's not, not turn based. Yeah, not turn based. So not gonna lie, a lot more said hectic. That, I just imagined Jake running around with the golf. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's perfect. Yep. So, yeah. We Wendy's also. Four four. There we go. Yeah, Wendy's four for four. Yeah. Have you considered like? had using different clubs and how those might change how things work we tried to just focus on um the like hitting the golf ball mechanic yep. i think the most and the, the other thing we talked about was okay well how should the physics work for the most part and that was one of the things we thought was really important because if you have like a map with a lot of verticality and you have a very limited amount of ammo you know you got to go pick it up um we kind of want the golf balls to behave more like uh, like everything's Velcro, pretty much, if that makes sense. So like, because otherwise the tendency would be all the golf balls end up at the bottom of the map really mm -hmm. easily, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So we kind of wanted it to be where like, oh, it might bounce like once or twice, you know, but we don't want it to be like... So maybe the walls really are a little bit bouncy, but the floors are very sticky? Mm -hmm. Sorta, sort of, yeah, yeah. Just not as bouncy. It's like, yeah, or, or it's like, like it's landing on carpet. Just, you know, carpet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, tall grass. We uh, we didn't think it would be very fun if it was like everyone shot their three golf balls and now it's everyone go pick up their three golf balls <laughs> for however amount of time. It'd be a fun game mode if all of the golf balls just started at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Ooh, like hungry yeah. Yeah. People yeah. go down there just yeah. all die yeah. at the start. Yeah. And they're hungry, uh, hungry hippos. We <laughs> thought about the idea where you could like. Um, if all of the golf balls did stay at the bottom, mm -hmm. then the people at the bottom, who may be more vulnerable, the people up top, would have more golf balls. That's that's true. Um, the other thing would be like traditionally in like a worms game, you know, there isn't normally a floor at the bottom. Was another thing. So it's like, where do those go? You know. So maybe we're still not sure how to deal with that. What if you had the golf balls just loop? at the bottom mm -hmm. and come back out the top. That's so you not have a to bad idea. Jump and hit the golf ball. <laughs> well, no, 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 cuz no. then it would then so it would probably stick if it's coming so straight if you hit down it up from the top, top. Would it come from the bottom? <laughs> yes. Uh, we also we no, we also thought about that where um, we would have probably like a set number of bounces before the golf ball is not lethal anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, we wouldn't want it to be like, "Oh, this golf ball's in an infinite loop falling, you know, or like it's falling for a really long time and you know you don't want to like get hit by one rolling around the ground it's like oh and it killed me <laughs> no one wants that so nobody likes getting knifed in the foot exactly like no. stepping on a knife and be like and i'm dead so yes Sweet. aiden so with the bouncing around and you said that you could have a um, team like friendly fire mm -hmm. is it possible to hit a golf ball and have it bounce and then hit you in the face too like I don't see why not. <laughs> I think I think trick shots would definitely have to be a big big part of it, especially if we had more vertical maps. I think yeah. flatter maps would usually work better, but a vertical map you could have some fun with. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Can you only hit your golf balls, or could you? We hit thought other ones we actually really? thought about that as well. Uh, we think that in the friendly fire mode, you can hit whatever golf ball you want, but when you have that off, you can only use your own golf balls. You know, and that could just be as simple as you know, color coding the balls in a colorblind friendly way. At least. <laughs> <laughs> I like this game a little bit more just because. Here you go. <laughs> so, yep. That's it. Any Sweet. other questions? Yep. I'd say that's that's a pretty good amount of detail to put into yep. a design document mm -hmm. for ex explaining that mechanic. If I was a programmer and I was confused as to how that interaction worked, that yeah. if you put that information in there, I would have no problem mm -hmm. building it from there. We so. actually started with he he kind of his idea was just like what he said initially like. Oh, it's golf, and you try to kill each other, and it's 2D, <laughs> and it's like a fighting game. And I was like, it's just Lethal League. This is just Lethal League, <laughs> I was right? That one, so yeah. then I was like, maybe we have to do like worms, <laughs> you know, to be like actually different. So, you know, it sounds good. It sounds yeah. interesting. Yep. Well, thanks. Yeah. All right. As much as we'd love to hear every group because this is fun and interesting. Um. It is, you guys are allowed to leave at some point, so darn shame. Um, so, to finish things up, reminders, we do not have a workshop this weekend. We have the Pitch Jam, which we will put in an email and in a Discord announcement. So please, if you are interested in that, check it out. And um, it's in Ellings? Yes, that's in Ellings 0308. If you, again, if you want to show you know, your game concept or idea, let one of us know. We'll give you a time at the start to present it. Um, today is the last day to guarantee you get your t-shirt size if you pay for it. Does anybody have money and wants to buy a t-shirt today? Okay, two. Okay, sweet. So, yep. Go forth, make games, and be awesome, guys. Thanks.